The reference to the one city, one book, it struck me that that's not really the situation. It's really two cities, two books, and two classes. Uh, it's all about actually that conflict. And there really was two cities. Uh, the people lived in one city in Dublin and they were doing very well. Very prosperous city at the time, actually, was growing in importance in, in, in economically. People like William Mark Murphy were becoming millionaires, extraordinarily ex uh, expanding, and, uh, and the other 400 employers who supported them. Well, underneath the underbelly of the city, and usually in around the docks in the centre city area, there was huge poverty, dreadful housing, pay conditions, hours of work, probably abysmal, infant mortality up in, with India, as we talk about Calcutta, comparably, comparable with Calcutta. So that contrast was extraordinarily uh, evident in, in the Dublin of that particular time. It's interesting, there was a book commissioned by the employers just after the dispute, obviously to put their side of the record, call, and it was written by um, Arnold Wright, uh, and it was called Disturbed Dublin. And it's very interesting, in the, in the Irish Worker in 1914, Connolly was vitriolic about that particular book, and I think he was probably responsible for the books that we have now. And he said, uh, when he wrote, um, he referred to Arnold Wright as a hack, journalist with no knowledge of Dublin people. One day this story might be told by a labour writer or even told by one of those literary men who, although not of the manual labour ranks, stood so grandly by the workers during that titanic struggle. That story would indeed read like an epic, but it would be an epic of which the heroes and the heroines were the humble men and women who went out on the streets to suffer and to starve, rather than suffer their right. To, combine, to, to, to lose their right to combine as they chose for the uplifting of their class. Mm -hmm.